Hello Champagne Dreamers, welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Miss J, your trash queen of glam, geek, and gore. And for today's video, I have another one of my makeup Thunderdome videos, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently this time. So I have six palettes by Melt Cosmetics, and I'm actually going to rank them twice. So if you want to find out why I'm doing the ranking twice and what criteria I'm going to use, go ahead and stick around because we're getting into it right now. All right, so for this video, I'm going to be ranking them twice, and I have six palettes from Melt Cosmetics. And the reason why I decided to rank them twice is because I was really having a hard time when I was thinking about how to rank them, because I feel one way about them when I think about the color stories and the packaging and the overall presentation. And sometimes I get really excited about the presentation of the palette, and then the performance... Wah, wah. So I decided to do a ranking of packaging, presentation, color story, just looking at the palette. Do you fall in love? Is this fantastic? Is it amazing? And then I'm doing a second ranking where I put them in order based on the actual performance for how I do my makeup. Now, one thing that I found while I was doing these two lists that no palette is in the same spot on both lists. It's a complete change around when I go from looking at the presentation and the packaging and when I look at the performance. So let's go ahead and start with looking at packaging, presentation, and color story. In the number six spot for presentation, I have got the She's In Parties palette. This is their newest palette, and it's one of the stacks that they took the shades from the stack and then put it into a palette, crossing our fingers that they decided to do that for the baby girl stack. That would be so good. But this is the She's In Parties, and it's beautiful. Like, this brocade print is very sophisticated. It's very elegant. This color story is very pretty. It's got some plummy purpley mauve kind of shades. We've got a couple beautiful shimmers in here. So it really is a nice palette, but it's just not as colorful. It's not as exciting. This is a little bit more muted. It's a little bit more of one kind of color in different tones and different shades. And so that's why it ended up in the bottom spot on this list. In number five on my presentation list, we have the Millennial Pinks palette. This one is nice. This is also one that's not super complicated. It's fairly sophisticated. It's got this raised, embossed, kind of studded feel. It is a beautiful pink color. I like the pink words on top of the lighter pink, uh, but it's just a little bit more subdued. It's a little bit more... Um, I guess maybe even too elegant for me. I like things that are bright and colorful and wild, and this is just a little too stately for me. So the Millennial Pinks, it's a beautiful sort of packaging, but it just doesn't excite me. But it didn't end up in the bottom spot because this color story, I actually like better than the She's In Parties. I love this range of pinks that we have. And then we have these couple interesting grays. So rather than just doing like a matte black, there's a couple of these great charcoal grays. The two grays are a little too similar. I wish they'd put in like a navy or some other kind of color there. But I really do like this combination of colors. I think that these uh, pink shades are really beautiful. And I think that they pair nicely together. So this color story saved this from the bottom spot, but She's In Party and Millennial Pinks are the bottom two in terms of presentation. In the number four spot for presentation, Smoke Session. So this is the palette that really kind of introduced me to Melt Cosmetics. I'd heard about them. They had the stacks and the stacks seemed really expensive. And then they came out with the Smoke Sessions palette. So this palette is green. It's got the marijuana leaves on it. Of course, I love green. I absolutely love this metallic green finish. I'm just not super into the weed theme. I think that that's not, it's not for everybody. And so I think that the packaging design is a little bit specialist, right? Like I don't mind pot themed makeup and I'm actually gonna do a whole video coming up fairly soon about marijuana and the legalization of marijuana and I'm gonna do some makeup featuring products that have marijuana derivatives like CBD oil in them and talk a little bit about the legalization. It's just not something I'm looking for every day. Now in terms of the color story, this is about a half and a half for me. I love these cool tone greens that are on this end of the palette. 
This shade right here is goals. I love this. This is one of my favorite greens in the world. This green is one of my favorite kinds of greens to use and wear all the time. These two are both very lovely. Here's where we get into these brownish goldish kind of like swampier colors. I just don't love them and I don't love these necessarily paired together. So I think the color story, if this had been all like shades of these kind of bluish greens or maybe had gone into some blues or some other cool tone sort of things, I probably would have put this a little higher, but the two sides of the palette don't seem to mesh very well together. In the number three spot, we have the Radioactive palette. In terms of packaging, I absolutely love what they did with this. I love glitter, I love neon, I think the sort of just crushed up shadow look is so cool. Um, I think that this lettering, that font over top of that is so fun. Now this is obviously over the top for a lot of people. Some people like the more elegant millennial pinks or the brocade of the she's in parties. This is what I love. I love this kind of beautiful neon fun. This reminds me of the 80s of my childhood, so I absolutely love it. And in terms of the color story, this is such a typical color story for me. I love a rainbow palette and I love rainbows that aren't just your traditional red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I love it when it's like a neon rainbow. I love it when it is a pastel rainbow. So I love it when they take the basic rainbow and they twist it in some way. So maybe do a rainbow of jewel tones, a rainbow of metallics, a rainbow of neons. I love it. So I think that this color story is really fun. It's a little bit more typical for me. Um, there's nothing surprising here. There's nothing that's like super inspiring or aspirational about it. But I think that this is something that is very true to my hashtag hooker clown aesthetic. In the top two spots, we have the Amore Eterno palettes. These are from last year's holiday collection. There's the Vida and the Muerte. And these are great, they fit together. The packaging is absolutely stunning on these. These, everybody talked about how beautiful these were and how much they loved the packaging. And I agree, this is so gorgeous. It's a celebration of the owner of Melt Cosmetics, Mexican heritage, and it's just beautiful. It continues on the back of the palette. It's just a beautiful, beautiful collection, the whole thing. And so I love these palettes. But in terms of deciding one and two, it all came down to color story. In the number two spot, we have the Vita palette. I think a lot of people might have assumed that I would put this in the number one spot just because of these greens down here on the end because I'm such a whore for green. I love green shadows and I do love this sort of citrusy feel that we have where we have the greens and the yellow and the orange up into these reds. I think it's absolutely beautiful but I think that it's just these neutrals are kind of boring to me and so that just kind of knocked it down a little bit. Compared to the Muerte palette, which is just a beautiful inspirational color story. I love the pairing of these teal greens with then these dark blues and then this red, this maroon red, and then you get this little pop of champagne at the end. This color story is so unexpected, interesting. I have never seen a palette like this. The other palette, I've seen, you know, those kind of citrusy collections of greens and yellows and oranges. And so it's beautiful, but it's not as unexpected as this. This to me really is a beautiful, unexpected, unique color story. So this had to be number one in terms of presentation. So beautiful packaging is great, but we always talk about the fact that you shouldn't buy makeup just for the packaging, guilty, but the performance has to be there. And so I decided to also rank these based on their performance and the list is much different, starting with number six. Number six is the Vita palette. I wanted to love this so much much. These were so beautiful. I spent so much fucking money on these. Um, cause these palettes are like $58 or something ridiculous like that. These, it's a beautiful color story, but these greens, this shimmer is like chunky and weird. 
These mattes are like super chalky and hard to blend and they just don't play well. And they're not the kind of mattes even that you could try working with like a setting spray. They just turn into mud. So like this palette was really hard to work with. And so the this and this one was the worst. I don't know why this was so bad. I'm so sad because I really do love these combinations. I think there's beautiful, beautiful combinations here, but it's just not workable. In the number five spot, we have the Radioactive palette. Again, I love a neon rainbow, but the colors in the original stack felt a little bit different. I had the original stack from back in the day, but these felt, when they were put into palette form, they just didn't have the same consistency. They were still pretty good, but just not as good. Now these four at the end, the new shades that they added when they turned it into a palette, we're just kind of a disappointment. You know, this shade is kind of chalky. This one is hard to, it's very stiff. A lot of Melt's mattes, oh, that's a tongue twister, are very dry. The formula is so dry. And sometimes that can be a benefit, so it helps you kind of move them around. But these are dry and also kind of stiff. So they kind of plunk down and they don't really want to move and they're kind of inconsistent. And this one was definitely a big offender in terms of that. And number four was the Muerte palette. So this one, very similar to the Vita palette, although this one seemed to perform a little bit better. I don't know if it's because this one has more deep shades and the deep shades maybe didn't have as much white pigment or the kind of things that they use to brighten those brighter shades that are in the Vita palette, that green and that yellow, they need a lot of white. Because I know that sometimes white can make things a little bit tougher to work with. And so I don't know if it's just because this one is darker overall. I did think that this one performed a little bit better, but these bottom three were all just kind of a disappointment. And then we turned the corner with performance with Millennial Pink. So this one's still a little bit fussy, a little bit finicky. This is one that because of the Vita and the Muerte palettes, I almost didn't pick this one up because I was like, I love the pinks. I love that color story, but I'm just not sure. Uh, you know, do I want to pay the $58 or whatever it is for Melt? Um, for this palette and luckily the quality of this one seems to be a lot better. The mattes are still a drier formula but they move a lot better, they blend a lot better. Now the two grays are a little too similar. I wish that they had put in like I said a navy blue or something just different to kind of blend out and work with these shades but the quality really starts to turn around when we get to the millennial pinks. In the number two spot, we have the She's In Parties. I bought this fairly recently, and again, I was skeptical. And this palette is actually the one that convinced me to buy the Millennial Pinks, because this is their most recent launch. Up until the Beetlejuice Collection comes out, by the time this video goes up, the Beetlejuice Collection might already be out, and so we don't know how those are. Before Beetlejuice, this was the most recent palette launch, and this was phenomenal. I have a review on this on my website, JanessaJ.com. I'll make sure I link that review down below. But this really kind of restored some of my faith in Melt and really convinced me that maybe they're going in the right direction. So I really did like the performance on this. It's as good as the number one palette. And so again, going back to color stories, that's what edged this into the number two because the performance on this really is good. But of course, you know I love me some greens. And so in the number one spot, of course, we have the Smoke Sessions palette. I really do like the performance of this. Now, like I said, I don't love the swampier colors. I don't get as much use out of those, but I do absolutely love these bluer greens. And the performance on this is amazing. I know some people have had trouble with their palettes where things have started to like bulge out of the pan and it seems like maybe things are turning. I've had this for a while and I haven't had any problems with it. So I really do love this one. And so in terms of performance, this one is the one that's really kind of awakened me to the brand and I love it. It's still the best. In terms of performance, it is my number one. 
So that is the end of the video, and it's the end of my first ever dual makeup Thunderdome. What did you think? Did you like having the categories broken down by packaging and presentation versus performance? Or would you rather just see one list, one countdown that really just kind of compares all of those elements together? Because as you saw with the performance, between smoke sessions and she's in parties, I still had to go back to color story to make the final decision. So would you rather see one list? Do you only care about packaging and presentation? Do you only care about performance? Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see in these upcoming makeup thunderdomes because a bitch loves to rank some things. So I am definitely going to be doing more of these. I have lots of brands where I have multiple palettes. And so I am super excited to bring you more makeup thunderdome. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumb up or give it a thumbs down we'll take the engagement either way I'm not a picky bitch while you're down there don't forget that you can subscribe and when you subscribe hit that bell icon so that you'll get notifications of all future uploads if you'd like to chat banter or commiserate between uploads all of my social media will be linked down in the description box below and don't forget that you can always find more great makeup and lifestyle content on my website the world of champagne at janessaj.com. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. I love you guys. And until I see you again, bye. Well, hello. Do you like stickers? Do you like drag queens? Do you like drag queens as superheroes? Do you like drag queens with sexy boys? Do you like drag queens on stickers with sexy boys pretending to be superheroes? Well, have I got a deal for you! I am super excited to be offering a five-piece sticker collection on Atomic Cotton's Etsy store. I'm going to make sure that I provide you the link. I'll put it on the screen right below, and I'll also include it down in the description box. But for only $10, you can get five fabulous stickers, four holographic, and one clear vinyl featuring photography by Brooklyn Ewing, Miranda Rowan, and artwork by Alyssa Christensen. All the information, like I said, will be down in the description box. And when you're shopping, don't forget that Atomic Cotton also has more than 70 horror and pop culture stickers to add to your collection. This is absolutely not sponsored. I just am friends with the owners of Atomic Cotton, Zach and Erica, and they gave me a space to put my sticker packs on the web. So we heart them. And the holidays are coming up. Who wouldn't want a big, fabulous drag queen to stuff their stocking? Sexy, right? <laughs>